So welcome back friends. Well, we are now going to talk about uh, already we have discussed the ancillary properties of femlodipine. Well, we will discuss further to that. We go on to the next slide. Well, we talk about the peripheral edema, which is a major limitation of amlodipine. Well, this uh, is a dose-dependent uh, incidence. Well, in a study of uh, 1,730 patients, the incidence of petal edema was approximately 10.8% with uh, 10 milligrams daily dose of amlodipine but only 3% at 5 milligrams and 1.8% at 2.5 milligrams. Well, this is from the physician's desk reference. Well, what is petal edema? Well, basically it is the swelling of your uh, ankles and your feet um, after consuming uh, amlodipine tablet and uh, you will have pitting. That means when you press it, there will be a mark left so this is basically what is commonly seen with amlodipine or calcium channel blockers. Here I am trying to show you in the figure that uh, discontinuation due to adverse events in uh, patients uh, who had somewhere around 335 uh, uh, cases of adverse events, 33 patients uh, that is approximately 10% of these due to they, they discontinued the therapy due to adverse event and due to Mm, edema, the percent of uh, patients uh, who discontinued the treatment was 22%. So it's quite high in number. So you can see for yourself that limitation of amlodipine is petal edema. We'll talk about it uh, later. Why, what is the cause of this petal edema? Why this happens? Why it is encountered? Uh, so that you can have an understanding of petal edema and how do you cure it? So now next we go on to the next slide. Well, what are the consequences of peripheral edema? Well, it is first of all non-compliance. Second is you need to reduce the dose or you need to withdraw the dose. Second is there is poor control of blood pressure and the end result morbidity and mortality associated with uncontrolled hypertension because the patients who are there on amlodipine, they at times they stop the treatment. So this leads to uncontrolled hypertension and uh, which will finally lead to increased morbidity and mortality due to uncontrolled uh, hypertension. So there will be a rise in the blood pressure. So these are the consequences of peripheral edema and we need to look into it seriously. So let's go on to the next slide where, where which says that there is a scope for further improvement in pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profile of amlodipine. Well, what are the areas of improvement? Well, it can be made more specific, it can be more pure, variability in pharmacokinetics can still be reduced, duration of action can still be prolonged, there can be homogeneity in uh, blood pressure control which can be increased further, the safety profile can be improved by ensuring safety in elderly hypertensives. There can be a dramatic reduction in the incidence of peripheral edema. Well, this can be done while preserving all the basic properties of amlodipine. So, you are presenting US amlodipine, which is the active component. And for your information, amlodipine is a 1 is to 1 racemic mixture of R and S enantiomers, which means there are two components one is R or the rectus form, and the second one is the S uh, isomer or the sinister isomer or the sinister enantiomer of amlodipine. Well, the vasodilating property of amlodipine is due to the S enantiomer. And this S enantiomer has 1000 fold greater affinity for dihydropyridine receptor than the R enantiomer. Well, the R isomer may not be inert. So this is about the S amlodipine and its active component, which I wanted to explain. Then we go on to the advantages of using single active isomer. Well, you are giving a reduced dose. There is less metabolic load on the liver as well as on the kidneys. Well, there is uh, less chances of interactions due to the R isomer also, which can be avoided. R may not be uh, inert. Well, it may bind to non-specific targets and may be responsible for adverse effects like peripheral edema. Now you uh, have taken a single isomer, which means you are 
not uh, including our uh, enantiomer. So probably those adverse events like peripheral edema will be less. So these are the general advantages of using a single active isomer of amlodipine, that is S amlodipine. Well, even uh, the, uh, the when you are giving the active uh, isomer of uh, amlodipine, it will definitely retain the ancillary properties. Well, all the cardioprotective and vascular protective effects of amlodipine are the class effects attributable to principally to the basic calcium channel blocking effect of amlodipine. So it is not due to S or R amlodipine, that is what it wants to talk about or what it wants to explain. Then antioxidant activities of amlodipine is attributed to both its high lipophilicity and the DHP ring. So again this was an article which was published in 2003 in the journal of arteriosclerosis thrombo thrombolysis uh, vascular biology. So this was again an article which was published and uh, it talks about the antioxidant activities of amlodipine which are attributable to its high lipophilicity and the DHP ring. So it is retaining the ancillary properties when you are giving S amlodipine. Well, we go on to the next slide. Well, this talks about less variability. If we can achieve less variability in the pharmacokinetics, then the better it is. So clearance of S amlodipine form is subjected to less intersubject variation than that of R amlodipine. Now, removing the variable inactive component further improves the homogeneity in BP control by further reducing variation in plasma concentrations. So now we have a better drug, which is a single isomer drug, which has got less variability in the pharmacokinetics. So a still longer half-life. Well, this is again a point which we need to discuss in the clinic. We are improving the half-life of uh, S-amlodipine. Well, S-amlodipine has a longer half-life than our amlodipine and the racemic amlodipine. Now, S-amlodipine has a half-life of 49.6 hours. Racemate amlodipine has 44.2 hours. Then the R amlodipine has a half-life of 34.9 hours. So you can see the trend that it is favoring towards the S amlodipine. That is, it has got the maximum half-life. Half-life of amlodipine is strongly correlated with highly predictive half-life of the S enantiomer. A longer half-life of S amlodipine will ensure blood pressure control even during the trough hours of dosing. So, this is again favoring that single drug, single enantiomer is improving the blood pressure control and it is enabling it to control the blood pressure even in those risky trough hours. So, we now go on further. We talk about the incidence of, we, I have explained in the past that non-selective, they cause uh, high incidence of uh, tachycardia, that is reflex tachycardia is there in these uh, dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Well, the cause is sudden fall in the blood pressure which activates the um, baroreceptors which causes the rise in the blood pressure and heart rate. So, peak trough fluctuations in the plasma concentration and the sudden fall in the blood pressure is the reason why you have reflex tachycardia. Why the incidence is less with S amlodipine, that is what is important. Well, because of the consistent pharmacokinetics and the longer half-life, we have less incidence. Then short-acting DHPs are associated with the reflex sympathomimetic nervous system activation, which causes an increase in the heart rate. Once the heart rate is more, there will be a increase in your blood pressure so there will be a tachycardia so in order to uh, counteract the fall in the blood pressure the heart rate increases so short acting dhps they cause reflex stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and increase the heart rate and counteract the fall in the blood pressure whereas s amlodipine does not have or it, it causes it's very minimal you can say uh, incidence of reflex tachycardia when you are giving s amlodipine now faster blood pressure control again a usp of s amlodipine well racemic amlodipine is more strongly bound than the s amlodipine so at the same time s amlodipine has a longer half-life than that of the racemate so protein binding of racemic amlodipine 
is stronger than the S-amlodipine. So this results in a faster blood pressure control by S-amlodipine as compared to your racemate amlodipine. So again highlighting the benefits of a single isomer drug S-amlodipine. Sorry. Now ensuring safety in elderly hypertensive. So how do you ensure that the elderly hypertensive they comply with your drug? Well, racemic amlodipine results in a higher R is to S ratio in the elderly. So they have accumulation of the R which leads to the side effects or the adverse effects. And probably due to this, these elderly patients stop taking the medicine. So this is probably we are ensuring when we are giving the single isomer drug as such there is no R I isomer only the S isomer is present so definitely this there will be a less incidence of uh, adverse events in the elderly because R isomer is absent altogether so we can be sure that there will be better compliance with respect to elderly patients when they are treated with for hypertension so now we talk about the reducing the incidence of edema. Well, uh, the overall, of overall incidence of edema with s in the CISA study was 0.7%, whereas in the CISA 2, uh, it was 1.92%. No patients complained of edema in the phase 3 trials. Well, CISA, uh, the full form is safety and efficacy of s Well, we will we'll be talking about these trials, we will talk about it in the mind map form, we will talk about it in detail in the later sessions. So for, 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 for now we need to know the incidence of um, edema uh, due to s in the CISA-1 trial and in the CISA-2 study. Right. So uh, now to summarize it all, well, we need to learn this, all the USP, all these points, we need to discuss about the benefits, we need to discuss about the ancillary properties which I mentioned, because this will be the common communication which we need to discuss in the clinic. We need to highlight them because many doctors might not be aware of it. And we have to talk about the chiral benefits of our s So with this, uh, let's, um, do a brief recap and if possible we'll do a complete we'll we'll summarize it completely well it is smlodipine ionized at physiological ph it has got high lipophilicity it has got high membrane affinity it has got higher bioavailability higher vascular selectivity and smaller negative inotropic effect long elimination half life slow onset and longer duration of action low variability in plasma concentrations, convenient once daily application, rare chances of reflex tachycardia, anti-atherosclerotic activity, anti-platelet activity, antioxidant activity, renoprotective effects, favorable effect on lipid profile. So these are, the, to summarize, these are the benefits offered by S-amlodipine over amlodipine. So with this, uh, I'll end this session today. So wish you a happy learning and wish you all the best. Thank you.